take a look at the Specna Arms B03, and this is a magnificent rifle I'm, I'm holding right here. So uh, yeah, let's take a look. Before we actually go into the details, let's just hop back in time and take a closer look at how this baby was unpacked out of the box. All right, we are looking at the original packaging that the Specna Arms B03 B03 came in and we'll just uh, take this baby out of the box and have a closer look inside. Here we have the gun inside the packaging with obviously the normal documents that you can expect. We ordered this one from Gunfire uh, PL, uh, so obviously there's the invoice in there and the Specna Arms user's manual. So let's take a look at all of the accessories that we get with this gun. You obviously get the uh, the standard battery that comes with it, which is 1100 milliamps, 9.6 volts, which is a lot for a standard gun. We get the uh, simple lanyard from Specna Arms, which is really cool. It's got the logo on it, etc. You get a magazine, which is cool. It's a very standard uh, magazine. If you're looking to buy more magazines or you've al already got magazines and you're wondering if any would fit in this gun, the standard D-Boys -Boy, D M4 magazine would fit. Some BBs, as you can expect. I would suggest not to use them because you never know what brand they are, and then of course, the actual gun. Neatly, tightly packed, uh, leaving for a little moving around inside of the box. Very happy with how this, uh, how all the Specna arm guns are packed. Uh, you'll never hear any complaints from me on this department. So let's uh, continue to uh, take a closer look at the gun itself and I'll give you some information on what this gun is made of and of course some specifications. Alright, so let's take another look at the gun. Uh, while you were looking at the unboxing, I've taken a couple of accessories off and put the originals back on. I've taken the uh, magazine off and I've put back the original uh, rear sides here. Here we have hidden the front sides which you can just put, put up there and this is actually converted into a 20 millimeter rail if you lower it again, which is good. So this is a full aluminium gun. The only two plastic parts are the uh, rear stock here, which is obviously extendable, and the, uh, the hand grip. They're both made of some sort of, some sort of plastic. The rest is full aluminium, like I mentioned, and uh, the gun weighs 2.6 kilograms, which is a great weight for the uh, material you used. It's um, a couple of grams um, uh, lighter than the G36, for example. It's very easy to maneuver. It's a lengthy gun, however, it's uh, very nice to operate. In this length, it's uh, 840 millimeters. You know, if I extend the buttstock completely, it'll convert into 920 millimeters. So it's very long. This is too long for me, as you can see. I usually have it right around there, and uh, this is uh, this is fine. So a couple of other things to mention about this gun. It's got a functioning bolt catch lever, which is nice. It's this little thing, obviously, that we push, uh, pull back, and this pops open. If I pull back further, you'll see the uh, hop-up unit actually becoming visible. If I release the unit, it stays open, which allows me for easy adjusting to the hop-up. Pressing this little button here, We'll close this little uh, compartment here. Let's do that now. If you press on this compartment, you can close it up again. Now this gun features a 20 millimeter wrist all around the gun. So on the top we have the, the wrist unit on the sides and also on the bottom, which leaves plenty of space to uh, equip your accessories, scopes, uh, LEDs, uh, LED lights, laser pointers, whatever you like. Obviously, a grip, uh, maybe some kind of grenade launcher if you want, or uh, a little 
thing to hold on the gun. Uh, the flash hider, you can take this off, 14 millimeters counterclockwise, and you can decide to either just take the tip off or the whole unit. So you could take uh, a silencer, this is the Solcom silencer, you could put it on like this, or you could put it on like that. I like this one more because it's not as long as uh, if you would just put it on the front of the gun. Uh, yeah, like I mentioned, 2.6 kilograms for this gun, and the battery that comes with it is 9.6 volts, standard 1100 milliamps, but you can you know, upgrade this to uh, 1600 or something like that if you'd like. Um, I'd like to take a closer look with you at you know, taking this thing off. It's in the end, it's not useful, what is it? Most people will look for a scope, a red dot, or some cool uh, magnifying scope, for example. Very quickly, the magazine. 300 BBs, high capacity magazine, you know, like I mentioned, standard Deep Boys magazine would fit just fine. Just push it in, snaps into place like, like a charm. It's uh, got a little bit of wobble in there. It's not much, but it's enough to be annoying. Uh, some people would like to put, you know, just a little bit of tape around the top that will get rid of the, uh, the wobble for you. But again, it's, it's an easy, easy fit. No, you don't need to push on it or anything. So the only bubble are the buttstock and the magazine. If I take this off, there's already less bubble. And it's really just the... See, now it's completely gone. All right, let's take a look at the accessories. I'll put the scope on with you and uh, we'll have a look at the silencer. All right, so we'll uh, take off the rear side here with a simple screwdriver and uh, swap it over for a cool red dot scope. It just screws onto the wrist with a simple, simple little mechanic here. And obviously it's, it's nice when you have one of the quick release scopes. Unfortunately this one isn't, so it's a tad difficult to get it on. I've decided to put this red dot all the way on the back as far as it can go. And it makes it look really, really sleek. And there we have the Red Dot Score currently installed. Put in the magazine, and you have a fit gun ready to go to combat with. All right, so after we put on the scope, let's take a look at the, um, the flash hider here. Now we're going to take off the entire front barrel and exchange it with the uh, Socom silencer. So let's quickly screw this off. It's a long thread. And this actually exposes part of the uh, inner barrel. And you can simply just make sure that you've put the silencer over that properly and start screwing that on. And make sure to do that counterclockwise, obviously. It's not one of those you want to exchange in the field, considering the thread on this thing. So there you have it. The uh, gun now with a sexy ass looking silencer. So as you can see, this gun will allow for many customization. Of course, not only because of the flash hider and the amount of scopes that you can put on it, but the whole wrist system, which can be filled with anything that you like. So now with all the accessories in place, I just want to show you the fire selector, which features uh, safe, semi, and auto. Obviously, the uh, fire selector feels a very sturdy. It's gentle to move, however, it really clicks into place, which is really nice. Now, before we actually do fire the gun, obviously, we'll need to install the battery, which is done in the buttstock, and I'm going to quickly show you that. It's a very simple thing to do. You take off the, uh, the end cap, this little piece of plastic here that you can just wiggle out, which will allow easy access to the compartment. Maybe you can see it in here. It's actually a little selector or a little connector there, which usually is easiest wiggled out using a screwdriver like this. We take our uh, standard battery here, connect that up to the wire, and make sure that we have the uh, stock as retracted as possible. You stick these things in there. 
wiggle them in all the way. And then to easy to, to hide this, connect to the easiest, you just extend the the stock and make sure that you wiggle the wires in properly. Then you put back the little cap like this, and then you can do that. Put this back in there, and we are ready to shoot. All right, I'm going to uh, start off by shooting on single, followed by full auto. I've taken the silencer off, and I will also shoot a few rounds with the silencer on, just to show you the uh, the difference in look. So we'll start off with semi. So a couple of last things on this gun, guys. Um, I love the M4 model, right? Um, this would classify as an SR10, seeing as it's you know it's got the longer barrel, so it would suffice for a DMR. However, it's got the 5.56 caliber ammunition. Um, if this would have had 7.62, this would have been the SR25. But this would be an M4 or an SR25, as you as you please. I love it. I like the look of it. The stock is good. The gun itself is is is, is finished in a very very nice way. A little wobble, the magazine a little, the stock a little, but these are all things that you can uh, manage uh, with, of course. I like the fact that you can uh, pop the, uh, the little uh, sides up and down to move it out the way for, you know, potential scope, the silencer, all the capabilities of this gun, the, uh, the, the bolt catch is nice, it's, it's, it's lovely. There's only one thing that I don't like so much about this gun. Again, this is something that you can, uh, can solve yourself. This gun out of the box is 172 euros on Gunfire PL. Um, it's a lower class gun, and as a result, the accuracy is not as good as you would uh, expect from, you know, a pro line. Uh, the inner barrel would need a precision barrel. As simple as that. Currently shooting at 25 meters, and your BBs go everywhere. They don't just go up or down. You know, it's you can adjust that with your hop up. However, they also turn left. They also turn right. It's not precise enough for that little bit of precision shooting out in the open. If you're shooting indoor with this thing, um, you could do it easily. However, I would really uh, uh, yeah, suggest that you get yourself uh, a precision barrel. That's what I will be doing for this rifle. And for the rest, I, I love it. I'm, uh, I'm very happy with this one, very pleased. I've shot with it once on, on a skirmish outside. And uh, yeah, this is going to be my primary gun from now on. So maybe you'll be able to expect some more of this. So before I close this little review on the uh, yeah on the Spectre Arms B03, let me just mention real quick again: subscribe to my channel if you liked the review, like the video to show me that you want to see more of this, um, and uh, yeah, you'll be able to expect more of reviews on airsoft, airsoft skirmish videos, but also of course videos on uh, gameplay, game reviews, and uh, obviously I want to approach you guys with some of my own uh, music as well. So, uh, yeah, subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more, and I'd uh, like to thank you for watching.